Welcome to the Sideline Pregame Show. I'm Jake Berry alongside Mark May. And Mark, we've got all three teams playing at home this week for the first time in a long time that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that, that this has occurred. Yeah, and Nikki Rowe is uh, going first. Uh, they've got tonight, and then uh, McCown Memorial will play tomorrow night. Uh, but uh, Nikki Rowe, a real good matchup with the PSJA Bears. Yeah, and the, and the Bears coming off a very tough, close loss to McCown Memorial. They're at 2-1. and one. What do we know about the, about the Bears? Well, the Bears... Um, Come in at three and three, and then two and one in the district play. Yeah, that one loss to Memorial, which was a two-point loss. It was a back-and-forth game, a real exciting game that was. Uh, they had beaten La Jolla and PSJA North in district so far. And curiously, this is a team unbeaten on the road. They're three and zero oh on the road this year, going up on the road tonight against the Nikki Row Warriors. Uh, Justin Morales, their quarterback, uh, has thrown for about. 500 yards more than uh, Jonas Ortiz has for Nicky Rowe, completing 62% of his passes and 14 touchdowns. He's also rushed for three scores, so Morales, can uh, he can run it, he can pass it. Uh, definitely a dual threat there. Uh, looking at their receivers, they've got one Miguel Flores, who's uh, one of the top receivers in the Valley. 48 receptions he has through just six games. Uh, averaging about 15 yards a catch and eight scores. So they like to go to him early and often uh, throughout the game. Uh, Ethan Castillo has 25 catches and two scores. Marco Guajardo, 26 receptions for three scores. Uh, then J.R. Vasquez is their running back. Now, this is a team that uh, throws about about a two to one ratio of pass to, to run, but uh, they do have Vasquez who's a running threat with about 400 yards rushing uh, through six games and four touchdowns. Averages about six yards a carry. So uh, he's good. He's also can catch the ball out of the backfield. We've seen him do that already. And then defensively, the Bears will come out with uh, Jacob Sanchez, a linebacker, leading the team with tackles and uh, two fumble recoveries. Uh, Manny Castillo on the defensive end has uh, 44 tackles and a sack. Um, Isaac Espino, the defensive back, leads the team with two interceptions. So a team that was in the playoffs last year, looks like they'll probably be that way again, although I, I don't think they can be Nikki Rowe. Yeah, and Rowe, 3-0, and a very impressive win last weekend, or last week uh, at home against PSA North. Yeah, they uh, beat them 24-19, had the big lead early, and then in the fourth quarter, the Raiders kind of came back a little bit. But uh, yep, the 3-0 and after beating Mackay, Juarez Lincoln, and PSJA North in the district play. The Row Warriors averaging about 34 points a game, about 380 yards of offense. Uh, we mentioned Jonas Ortiz. He's passed for close to 1,200 yards. 75% completions, which is a, a very impressive, and 17 touchdowns with only one interception. So a very, very good touchdown to interception ratio. And a very good rusher, too. We saw him last week rush for 92 yards, including a 42-yard touchdown run. So he can do it all. And he is spreading the wealth on offense. Like, mm -hmm. There's a lot of players that are receiving uh, receiving the ball from him and uh, benefiting, especially in the running game, from uh, his ability to throw the ball. Yeah, a lot of guys have touched the ball, a lot of touches. Lorenzo Lopez who's come back from injury, uh, 259 yards and three scores. He's actually second on the team in rushing now, uh, about 15 yards behind uh, Ortiz, who uh, took over that uh, rushing lead last week. Uh, Joey Partida has two scores, averaging about six and a half a carry. Uh, Nick Meehan has uh, five yards a carry and four touchdown scores. And Meehan, by the way, was the subject of our interview this week. My name is Nicholas Meehan. I play running back for Nicky Rowe Warriors. They hand this off. This is Meehan. Big hole. Touchdown. Nicholas Meehan with the touchdown, his second of the season. And the Warriors lead it now 27 to 19. I feel like running back is mostly about like pounding the ball in the middle and trying to get like extra yards so you could then throw the ball. I think the running back is supposed to be the toughest player on the field. As a running back, the coach expects a lot from you, especially here in the high school, because in high school, we run the ball a lot. We don't really pass as much as like in the NFL and all that other stuff. But I'm willing to take on that pressure and you know tackle it as a running back. Nicky Rowe football, we're a family, right? Uh, we all work together. We all work really hard to accomplish one goal. And I just think family is the most important thing in Nicky Rowe. And there's a look at Rowe's spectacular running back, Nick Meehan. Who else is Roe going to depend on in this game? Because we've seen uh, Gustavo Cruz, we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Savage is still out uh, right now. We'll see when he comes back. Yeah. But uh, they, they've been plugging away different players. Yeah, some other guys have really stepped up. Uh, Anzal Dua. 
uh, leads the team with uh, 23 receptions, over 200 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Joey Partida has 20 catches for 196 yards and a couple of scores. Uh, Gustavo Cruz that you mentioned, the tight end, cut only one pass last week, but it went for a touchdown. And he's got five touchdowns now in uh, in uh, six games. So we look at the road defense and um, they're led by Jason Neal, defensive back with 36 tackles. Then Jose Alonso has 35 plus a couple of fumble recoveries. And then on the defensive line, Omar Vidal leads the team with four sacks and 28 tackles. Uh, Derek Luna at linebacker has 30 tackles. So they got a lot of guys stepping up on defense as well. Well, that'll be an interesting game, but we've got another game, which is tomorrow between McAllen uh, High and mm -hmm. McAllen Memorial. Uh, you know, you throw the records out when these games happen. What do we know about, uh, about Memorial? Yeah, it's a, it's a big rivalry. It goes back to the uh, early 1980s. And I think Mackay still leads the all-time series, but Memorial's been dominating over the last 10 years or so. And Mackay technically the home game, I mean the home team for this one. So, uh, um, but looking at Memorial, they're five and one overall, two and one in the district. They did have that narrow loss on the last play of the game to Mission. In fact, Mission beat Memorial on the last play, then they turned around and beat Mackay on the last play. And in beat Waters. Weeks. And then Waters Lincoln last week. Yeah, and then Waters Lincoln by a single point. So, yeah. Uh, they've been, uh, the, it's been the year of living dangerously for the Mission. Eagles. But uh, getting back to Memorial, uh, they, they lost a mission, beat La Jolla, beat PSJ's Bears, and a squeaker. They're averaging about 50 points a game over the last two games, 101 points in the last two games. So they've really turned it up a notch. Uh, about 435 yards of offense, about 365 yards rushing per game. And of course, it's that's what they like to do is run the football. And that'll be the key for Matt Caius to stop or at least stymie a little bit that running game for Memorial. Uh, they've got Campbell Spates, who had his sixth straight 200 yard rushing game, averaging 11-4 a carry as over 1,400 yards. He'll probably go over 1,500 tomorrow night and 23 touchdowns. Has had five touchdowns in each of the last two games, which is just phenomenal. Yeah, and, and for Mack High, they've, they've been able to play some good defense lately, mm -hmm. uh, especially in district, um, you know, and but the points have been hard to come by. Yeah, uh, especially last week, um, they lost to La Jolla 14-7. Week before that, they managed 10 against Mission and a 13-10 overtime loss uh, against Rowe. They, they, you know, they played every team competitively, you know, like you said, but they, they've... Uh, uh, been unable to uh, outscore their opponents. Uh, Hunter Curl has really kind of emerged as the quarterback, just a sophomore, but he's really kind of coming into his own at the quarterback spot. Uh, Troy Martinez at the running back is still strong. Quinn Canada has emerged in the last uh, three games as being a strong receiving threat. And then you look at the, the Mackay defense, and it'll be a tall order for Mackay to really uh, slow down this Memorial team, especially the Memorial running game. And if they can do that and get the ball in the Mackay's possession more, give them more possessions, and especially a field position, then uh, Mackay has a chance to, if they can keep the score low, I think Mackay has a chance there to pull the upset. But um, Juan Corpus, Sir Arredondo on the defensive line have been stellar. Uh, defensive back Dylan Suarez uh, and defensive back J Jackson Helmkamp have been really strong for them. And then the linebacker, uh, Trace Gagne and Tyler Zachman have been really strong there too. So, but we'll see what happens. It's a great rivalry, Mackay Memorial. Well, there you have it. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, more of the Sideline pregame show.